Hello and welcome. Uh, this is video number two in a eight part series on the Industrial Revolution. Uh, in the first video, we talked about the agricultural revolution that really paved the way for industrialization in England. In today's video, uh, we're gonna take a look at what it was that, that England had going for it uh, that made it the place where industrialization would happen first. Uh, so with that, we'll get started. All right, so as far as addressing the factors that enabled uh, Great Britain to be the starting point for industrialization, I'm just going to work through uh, what I've categorized as three different factors. All right, the first factor uh, that was important and was helpful for Great Britain uh, being a leader uh, for industrialization was capital. And by capital, I uh, basically mean money. Um, had there not been uh, any money or people with resources willing to invest in something new, uh, it's far less likely uh, that industrialization would have uh, started in England or, or, or necessarily even happened until that was something that was available. Uh, but the reality was uh, in Great Britain, uh, there were uh, quite a few resources available. Uh, there were quite a few people uh, with a lot of resources. Uh, for example, uh, there were uh, a number of individuals that had grown uh, quite wealthy, either through commerce, like uh, overseas trade. Uh, maybe uh, they were one of the wealthy landowners that had been buying up small farms and had, and had made and put together a very profitable farming operation. Uh, and one of the things that you tend to see with people that have quite a bit of money is often they have an interest in finding ways to help that money grow. And so there was a willingness uh, for people with money to invest in, in new ideas. And, and a lot of that would turn out to be uh, some of these uh, innovations uh, that that uh, become characteristic of the of the industrial revolution. Um, in addition to simply having people with money and a willingness to invest, uh, the way the government was structured in Great Britain and just how things had gone uh, for Great Britain as a country uh, during much of the 1700s, in particular, uh, had it in a position to be a, really a pro uh, business kind of environment. Uh, the way the the banking system was structured in England and the way uh, the the uh, legal system uh, was set up, the way some of the, the laws were uh, related to business and, and investing and all that uh, were favorable uh, for people who were wanting to put their money into new things in that way. Uh, so overall, uh, when it came to the money side of things, um, much of what was in place pointed towards investment in new things. And without that, uh, that would definitely have made it uh, less likely that industrialization would have either developed at this time uh, in England or, or necessarily at all if, if that aspect of, of things wasn't present. Now, second, a second big thing that was helpful for Great Britain being uh, a leader for industrialization uh, were the natural resources that were available, readily available right there in England. Uh, with industrialization, with the in development of machines and some of the power sources, uh, that would would fuel early industrialization. Um, all of that was right there in England. And the biggest thing that that did is it meant the costs of trying to make this type of thing happen were going to be as low as they could possibly be. And anytime uh, you're starting something new, if you can have the costs be low as opposed to high, uh, that definitely gives you a better chance of getting started. And some examples of resources that were readily available that were very important were things like uh, harbors and rivers, iron and coal. Uh, the harbors uh, were were used in shipping goods, whether that, whether that was raw materials or finished products. Uh, the rivers were also used uh, with shipping uh, goods and, as well as as power sources. Um, iron uh, was used to make the steel uh, that many of these machines would be made out of that would be a big part of it early industrialization. And then coal, of course, was a, a fuel source uh, that was used. And again, because they were uh, readily available, uh, that meant that it was going to be about as cheap as anywhere uh, to get some of these operations going and, and to maintain some of these operations. Now, a third uh, asset that Great Britain had uh, that would prove to be uh, significant as the factory system in particular develops is having a, a supply of labor uh, that was ready to go. And one of the biggest reasons why there were a lot of workers available uh, as things like the factory system would develop is with less people working in agriculture, uh, there were people looking for other things that they could do to be productive. And, and so that's a big, that's also part of why the agricultural revolution was very significant to leading into the industrial revolution. Um, had most people still needed to be used just to produce the food people needed to survive, 
uh, there wouldn't have been a lot of people available to really do anything else. Uh, but as it stood, uh, there were people available to do other things. And something else that that would, would also do, especially with early industrialization, is it would help keep the costs low. Uh, when you have an abundance of workers uh, willing and able to do the work that's necessary, uh, you can generally pay a lower wage uh, than if you have very few people uh, compared to what you need. Uh, so when you put all those things together, it shouldn't be surprising uh, that uh, England would have a lot of the, the tools, so to speak, that it would need uh, to begin what we now know of as industrialization. Now, going along with this, I want to take just a minute to uh, talk about the textile industry. Uh, when we talk about industrialization in England, uh, the textile industry or the clothing industry ends up being uh, the industry that goes through uh, some of the most significant changes really first before other things uh, start coming online. Uh, Great Britain was definitely a significant country when it came to producing uh, clothing and, uh, you know, cotton clothing especially uh, becomes uh, something that, that gets to be in, in high demand. And when you have a product uh, that, that a lot of people want, if you are able to produce it uh, efficiently, uh, quickly, cheaply, uh, the opportunity for uh, making a lot of money uh, is there. And so this was definitely a, an industry that people were willing to, to try to improve, uh, a lot to gain if they did. And so on the screen there, I've got just some examples of some innovations that were or that were developed during the 1700s to improve uh, the production of clothing, especially cotton clothing. And uh, one thing to point out, uh, in the early phases of this, in the early part of the 1700s, uh, much of the, the production of, of clothing took place within people's homes. And the equipment that people used uh, was small enough uh, that, that people had it in their homes. Uh, so one of the big things that will change is as they move uh, to new power sources and bigger machines, uh, that's a big part of what leads to a factory system and people going from working in their homes uh, to working in some other location. Uh, more on that in an upcoming video. Uh, but as far as just touching on some, some key innovations with making clothing, uh, the flying shuttle, which is pictured there on the left, uh, that was a, a device uh, that was uh, used to speed up the weaving process. Uh, so when you had thread and then you were going to weave it into the actual cloth, uh, basically that enabled someone uh, who was weaving uh, thread together uh, to work twice as quickly. Uh, as they got faster at weaving, uh, one of the things that they needed to do was speed up the process of, of producing the thread uh, that they would weave with. And so uh, work was done to try to improve that process. Uh, one of the early innovations on the spinning process uh, part of the process was the spinning jenny, uh, which basically enabled a person to uh, spin uh, cotton into thread about eight times faster uh, than how it had been done before. Uh, so that was a major innovation in, in just speeding up how fast they could uh, produce cotton, uh, cotton material. And then on the right hand side gets into uh, the power loom uh, where uh, this one was still with spinning. They'll end up making uh, different devices uh, that use other power sources like water uh, to speed up the spinning process, speed up the weaving process. And especially when they start getting into the machines uh, that used water power and, and were much bigger and bulkier, uh, that's again, when people began to move from uh, working in their homes to actually working in uh, other places. Now, one last thing to touch on here, um, and this is going to be true of any process. A, a process can only go as fast as the slowest part in the process. And even though they had made a lot of improvements uh, at, at weaving speed and, and spinning uh, into thread speed, uh, one thing that still was slow uh, was having cotton uh, prepared and ready to be spun into thread. If you're not familiar with the cotton plant, uh, when you pick cotton off of the plant, one of the things that comes with it are seeds that are really kind of difficult to, to pull out of the cotton. And so that's a time consuming, tedious process. And without the ability to have an abundance of clean cotton ready to spin into thread, uh, to a certain degree, it didn't even really matter uh, how quick uh, some of the other parts of the process were. And so that led to yet another invention, as necessity often does, and that was the cotton gin, uh, which was uh, really a fairly simple device uh, that would very quickly uh, clean the cotton and, and get rid of the seeds so the cotton was ready to be spun into thread. And I don't know how much you can tell from the two pictures that are on here, but uh, basically what the cotton gin was was a box. Uh, you would put cotton with the seeds still stuck to the cotton into one side. Uh, you would turn a crank and it would pull uh, the cotton and the seeds through the box. And as it was pulled through the box, it rolled through what was basically like little metal fingers that would flick seeds out one side, clean cotton out the other. And just like that, you were ready to go. And so almost overnight, uh, once the cotton gin was operational, uh, the process of cleaning cotton so it was ready to be spun into thread 
uh, sped up by about 50 times, so very significant. And, and that's basically what you'll end up seeing uh, throughout uh, early industrialization, especially, is, is just one innovation after another. And uh, with the goal of, of being efficient at whatever it was they wanted to make, uh, they found all the different ways uh, to get there uh, kind of one step at a time. Uh, so at this point, uh, I want to go ahead and stop with this video. Um, in the next video, uh, we'll address industrialization generally and just talk about some of the things that were changing, uh, at least as far as how people's lives uh, were, were working. And uh, we'll uh, just go on from there. Uh, so thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful.